President Trump today released guidelines on reopening businesses. Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema, a Democrat, was just named to the White House Economic Recovery Task Force. And Senator Sinema is live on the phone with us this afternoon. Senator, uh, hello. First, um, how are you doing? Where are you and have you been tested for COVID-19? Hi, Jared. Um, I'm doing well. I'm in Arizona and I have been tested. I am negative. I have not been exposed to the virus and I, I don't have it now. So I'm healthy and well. Good to know. President Trump released his plan to start to reopen our economy, the guidelines for it. So you're on this task force. Did that come as a surprise? And also, we know the decision to lift restrictions and open businesses is ultimately up to the governors. So what will be the purpose of the task force? Well, I w we had our first meeting of the task force this morning, and I had an opportunity to speak directly to the president. And I emphasized how important it is that we have widespread testing in Arizona, both to make sure that individuals who want to return to work are not currently infected with the coronavirus. But also, we must have widespread testing of the antibody test. Mm -hmm. We saw recent news, in fact, just yesterday, about the, how the University of Arizona has developed an antibody test and plans to um, have 250,000 tests around the state for healthcare workers and other important essential workers. Those two tests together must be uh, widely available. That way folks in Arizona feel safe going back to work and know that they're not going to infect others or be infected by doing their jobs. By my math, around 6% of our population here in Arizona has had one of these tests. So what is being done to bring more testing here, to bring more widespread testing so we can figure out who's had this virus? Well, Jared, unfortunately, Arizona is at the low end in terms of um, testing at a per capita basis. As you mentioned, it's a very small percentage of Arizonans who've had the test. So we've been um, reaching out to the governor's office to encourage him to increase uh, purchasing of these tests to make it more widely available in Arizona. And this morning in my conversation again with the president, I urged him to ensure that we're increasing production of these tests especially the rapid test developed by Abbott Technologies that can be administered and solved within 15 minutes. So a person can find out very quickly if they have the virus and whether or not they can be cleared to go back to work. The, the fact is the United States is behind on production of these tests and needs to dramatically increase their production as we consider reopening our economy and getting Arizonans back to work. I'm sure your office is hearing uh, frustrations from people because we had our first case in Maricopa County back in January. We still don't have widespread testing. Hospitals still don't have masks and gowns. Our fire crews in Phoenix are wearing rain ponchos because they don't have the proper PPE. In three months, why hasn't the federal government been able to figure this out? Jared, that's a question I haven't been able to get an answer to. And what's more disturbing is that in addition to that level of uh, a lack of confidence, we're also seeing continued problems that Arizonans are feeling in their pocketbooks and in their homes every day. We just learned this morning that Congress allowed the Paycheck Protection Program to run out of funding, and that's because of partisan bickering. We could have fixed that a week ago today. We had the opportunity last Thursday. I and others called for it to get done, and they didn't do it. We also know that Arizonans are still waiting to get their unemployment insurance. And the Department of Economic Security is going to take two more weeks to build a new system to be able to process some of these applications. So yes. Arizonans are hurting right now. And unfortunately, they're seeing a state and a federal government that hasn't met all their needs, which is why I'm calling on folks to put aside the partisanship and just put your head down and work hard so we can solve these problems for Arizonans. Yeah, I mean, widespread testing. acknowledging you don't we have need the Paycheck Protection Program mm -hmm. and we need unemployment insurance for Arizonans. Um, let's talk about that Paycheck Pro Protection Program for small businesses. Um, we've been told 11,000 of our businesses have been approved for some cash in there to keep people on the payroll, but the um, Greater Phoenix Economic Council said we have half a million small businesses who still need some help. So when can they expect Congress to pass something? When can they expect some financial help? It's hard to answer that question because right now, leadership of both parties are fighting with each other over partisan issues. Um, I'm sure that comes as no surprise to Arizonans. I continue to beat a daily drumbeat to say this is not the time. It's never the time for partisanship. It is the time to help businesses. I do have some updates for businesses in Arizona. If you have already submitted an application through the PPP program, you are still in the queue. And as soon as funding is secured, 
hopefully by early next week, your loan application will continue to move through. You have no need to take any action. If you're a small business who hasn't yet been able to submit a PPP application, my advice is to complete the application, gather all of your documents, and be ready to apply as soon as this funding is replenished, which could be as early as next week. Again, if you already have an application in, you are in the queue, and and we will get to you soon, as soon as we replenish the funds. Some and of the number two, if you haven't applied, get your application together and get ready. It's very important that we do this for Arizona businesses. Jared, as you know, 94% of Arizona businesses are small businesses. This is the lifeblood of our state, and it's critical that we get this funding out the door to these small businesses right now. Yeah, Senator, a lot of the bigger banks apparently were not approving some of our small businesses for loans at first during the initial rollout. Has all that been cleared up? Are they cooperating now? Unfortunately, the smallest of small businesses are the ones who received the shortest shrift in this first round. While the Senate gave guidance to the SBA and the administration on how to prioritize loans, we were supposed, we told them they were supposed to prioritize loans for the smallest of small businesses, for rural and underserved communities. Mm. But the reality is, is that the largest small businesses with pre existing relationships with large banks receive first shot. So we are working hard now to ensure that the replenishment of funding allows these small businesses to get access to the funding which was intended for them. And we're pushing the Small Business Administration to follow the guidance the Senate gave them when we passed this legislation several weeks ago. Our farmers are struggling. I saw Arizona dairy farmers dumped 12 million pounds of milk this month alone because schools aren't taking the milk, restaurants aren't open to take the milk. I know uh, you and Senator McSally sent a letter to the USDA today or, or yesterday, one day this week. What specifically are you trying to get from the Department of Agriculture for our farmers? Well, first of all, we believe that farms and farmers should be eligible for all small business programs just like other businesses across the country. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program, but also the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Farms should be eligible for all that money. Farms should also be held harmless if they're facing, again, like we said, like you just said with the dairy industry, they're facing losses beyond their control because of the social um, distancing and the public health requirements, they're facing major losses. So we've reached out to ask that the Department of Agriculture and the administration provide special consideration for our farms to help them during this time. And a question about the stimulus cash. Americans are getting their stimul stimulus cash uh, this week. We know that. Uh, is that going to be enough? Is another round of these payments going to come maybe sometime in late May or June or July? While I am grateful that many Arizonans began to see their stimulus checks in their checking accounts yesterday, uh, we know that it is not nearly enough. $1,200 for an individual um, is not enough funding to last during the length of this crisis. The CARES Act, um, as, as, uh, as we passed it several weeks ago, was designed to help the economy make it through about eight to ten weeks. Um, the reality that we're seeing on the ground is that this is not enough funding to provide for the needs for individuals or businesses or local governments for that period of time, which is why, Jared, I'm working so hard on the next package. We're working on a package that we'll call CARES Act 2 that will provide more relief to businesses, more relief to our state and local governments, more relief to our hospitals, more relief to individuals for unemployment insurance and additional stimulus checks. We know that this crisis is not far from over. But as we ask Arizonans to do their part to slow the spread of this virus and save lives, it is our duty to ensure that they have the financial ability to take care of them, their families and to keep themselves safe and healthy during this time. All that right. is our duty as the government. Senator Sinema, thank you very much for your time. Hope to talk to you soon.